welcome by For the Passion, Not the Fashion, the YouTube channel. We are here with Rick Hunold from Exodus and Die You Main at the moment. Yes, uh, sir. The new, your new band we're going to hear much more from in the future, I guess. Yes, sir. Yeah. First of all, I want to, con I want to say congratulations with the Warriors. Yeah. To the final. Was a big game. Last night was killer. Yes. It was awesome. Thank Played you. Yeah, so that's why I wear my, my jersey. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Okay. Well, uh, let's start. Wait a moment. I put, uh, I got so many questions. But uh, first of all, for every viewer, we're going to do this interview in uh, several parts. So this will be part one with Rick. And part two and part three will follow later. Okay. Hi, Rick. Welcome to our show for the passion, hey, Marco, not the fashion. Awesome. How you doing, Marco? I'm fine, and I'm glad finally to talk to you. Absolutely. Uh, can I, first of all, of all I, this interview is a little bit about your whole history and your future. Okay. So it yes, will be, it's a long line. Uh, first of all, what I want to ask you, what brought you into heavy music in the first place? And were you mostly influenced by the more heavy bands from Europe or the more melodic stuff from the USA when you were a kid? Uh, so when I was growing up, before I started playing guitar, uh, I was raised in in Oakland and in, in, in Berkeley, yeah, California, um, Bay Area. So you've been there, Marco. Um, so when I was younger, before I started playing guitar, I was influenced by R&B and funk. You know what I mean? Really, yeah. uh, not so much metal. And then as time went on and uh, meeting more friends and hanging out and started to skateboard, that was a big change. I started to skateboard and ride BMX bikes. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, and then, I love it. And then, yeah, the new, the new, the new friends and stuff. And then, and then, Then all of a sudden we start we started listening to harder rock, ACDC, Van Halen, Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, uh, you know um, all the the big U.S. bands that we were listening to brought up on, um, and then I actually when I was younger I played piano, so okay. uh, I started listening to this the heavier rock stuff and I'm going man. I want to, I want to try to play guitar, dude. And then, uh, so I went out and I bought me a guitar, uh, when I was about 16. Yeah. Maybe, maybe late 15, 16. Uh, and then I just started playing with friends and listening to records and spending a lot, a lot, a lot of time on trying to learn how to play this guitar. <laughs> But you were you were part of the first Bay Area trash wave with Metallica. Oh, of Exodus. course, of course. Yeah, that's... That, that came later. That came later. That came about. Um, so I started playing at about fifteen and a half or sixteen, uh, and honestly, really, really spent a good, a good. I didn't really go out and party after I got a guitar. I really stayed in my room and just played with my friends all the time. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to learn how to play this guitar. Uh, and then a couple years later, uh, one thing led to another, and uh, I was introduced to Exodus. Um, and then, so if you want to go deeper into that, we can. Next questions. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh You're you're one of the founding members of the Bay Area thrash metal band Exodus. Yes. Sir. How was how was Exodus started and from the very beginning? Okay, so from the very beginning, um, before me, uh, I'm going to say 82, 83, maybe. Um, Exodus was based out of San Pablo, California. Hmm. It's a little tiny town on the outside of the bay area uh about 20 minutes away from oakland and berkeley um so it was gary holt 
Kirk Hammett, Jeff Andrews, Tom Hunting. Yeah. Uh, be this before Paul. So Tom was playing drums and singing at the same time. So they were doing Iron Maiden, Priest covers, a little bit of uh, Angel Witch, you know what I mean? Uh, stuff like that. Um, European stuff. Yeah, actually, yeah. More – they they turned me on to more of the the European stuff when I when I got to meet them. Uh, so that's a whole different trip. So yeah. So um, and they they started in early early eighties. Exodus started playing backyard parties uh, at houses. They played a place called Alvarado Park. Um, with with bands like Blind Illusion, who Love had that Larry Long from Primus and Mark Biederman from from uh, Blind Illusion, uh, uh, Les Claypool was in Blind Illusion. All these people um, started basically in the same in the same time. <clears throat> um, so moving forward a little bit after the uh, day after the. Um, the house parties and, and the Alvarado Park parties and stuff, they moved on to um, playing what was called in the San Francisco. I think their first, one of their first actual gigs in a nightclub uh, was called Metal Monday. And it was at the old Waldorf in San Francisco, California. And this actual venue and, and show that happened every Monday actually had a huge, huge part in catapulting the whole thrash scene in the San Francisco uh, in the very beginning. Um, so you got Kirk, <clears throat> same guys, Jeff Andrews, Gary Holt, Tom, and here comes Paul. Oh. So – before before the Metal Monday shows, I believe I believe Kirk was the one that met Paul at a show in San Francisco. It might have been a show in Berkeley. I'm not sure at the Keystone Berkeley, but somehow Paul and Kirk were introduced to each other. Uh, Kirk was from I believe Kirk was from Richmond. And Paul lived in a place called Kensington, California, which is right inside of Berkeley. You know what I mean? Yeah, El Cerrito. It's, it's a little tiny town on the very outskirts of Berkeley, but it, it is considered Berkeley. <clears throat> um, so p somehow, you know, and Paul was a really big skateboarder. Uh, so he, him and him and <clears throat> Kirk were introduced together, um, started talking, and they found that they had a lot, a lot of, you know, musical, everything. They they love Maiden. They love Sabbath. They love Van Halen. And so Kirk is like, "Hey, why don't you come uh, check out our band? You know what I mean? Maybe maybe we we're looking for a singer, right?" Yeah. Well, so Paul, uh, you know, the story goes is Paul. You know, okay, Paul joins Exodus. Um, mm -hmm. him and Kirk and Gary they become closest buddies. Uh, and then they, they rehearse, they write some more songs. Right now they're doing Whipping Queen, Death and Domination, Ender, uh, some covers, yeah. uh, Hell's Breath. Um, and this is like probably, I'm gonna say this is probably like a year before I got, got, got introduced to Gary. Um, and I'll get into that later. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay. So Paul and Exodus start rehearsing and they start doing gigs at, um, I think they did some more gigs at Alvarado Park. Uh, they did, I think they might have done one show at the Keystone Berkeley and one show at a Metal Monday and one show at the Mabuhe Gardens. Um, maybe with Anvil Chorus, uh, Doug Piercy's old band. Um, 
and maybe with old heathen i'm not sure but th these are like the very first gigs with paul um, okay okay so they start they start getting the buzz and the scene okay so at this time in the early 80s there was no internet no wi-fi no nothing you know everything was uh it was so new and so fresh that honestly, thrash metal. I think the only place that you could listen to thrash metal was probably San Francisco in the whole world. Um, you know, yeah. uh, this is 82, 83. Uh, you know, and there was a lot of great, great bands coming up, man, from from back in that day. Uh I could go on and on. But anyway, so um uh Okay, so we have, we have, we have, okay, we have fans. Now, I'm going to talk about people that weren't in the bands, but were just as important. Yeah. Now, now listen, this is very important. These kids were the people that got thrashed to the world. There was some tape traders involved in, in, in our fan base. Um, this is before me, okay? This is like a year before I joined the band. So we have... We have Ron Quintana. Uh, he's, he's a known guy. Everybody yeah. knows Ron Quintana. Absolutely. Brian Liu. Yeah. Sam Kress. Rest in peace. Uh, just to name a few. These, these three cats, dude. These three guys were just as important, if not more important, to the scene back in the day for getting it out to the masses. Because they were the guys starting the magazines. Yeah. They were the, the fanzines, the black and white little th three pieces of paper, you know, that they, they'd do it at their house and write articles. And I did too. On. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, and these are the guys, they, they were the tape traders, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, and Lars was a big part of that too. Um, Lars was a big part of that too. Um, so, these three cats in the Bay Area, they were super, super important to our scene, bro. And honestly, still are to this day. Uh, Brian Liu and Harold Oyman have Harold's done... a photographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They well, they did the, the, the murder in the front row. The murder book, in the know, front row, yeah. Which, which turned into the movie. You know, it's huge. Big deal. I get, I get chicken pox. So I, I murder in the front row. Everything, the song, the videos, the the, the photos, everything is so epic. You know, it's it's awesome. <laughs> It, it really is awesome. It's, 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 a uh, honestly, it's my childhood. Um, so, uh, okay. So the where we, okay. So one day I'm just a teenager from like 16 years old, adult, yeah. probably 17 now. Um, Exodus has, has started to do gigs in the, in the San Francisco club scene. Uh, um, Paul joins the band. They start writing some music and they start doing more um, original material. Uh, it's 1983, maybe the beginning, beginning of 84. I'm not sure. I might be a little late on that. Um, but so I get a call <clears throat> from a friend of mine <clears throat> named Adam Segan. Yo, Rick, what's up, dude? Uh, so he knows I've been playing, um, you know, because uh, we were good. We were good friends. He knew he knew I was I was playing. I was really, really serious about it and, and all this stuff. Um, so he calls me up and he goes, he, I had some I had a couple of four by 12 Marshall cabinets. Right. He calls me up and he goes, Rick, I got this band Exodus, man, who needs to borrow a couple of cabs. Are, are, can you do that for them? Yeah. And I'm like, I've never heard of Exodus before. I'm like, yo, OK. No problem. Just get me in free and, uh, and uh, it's all good. And we were, none of us were even old enough to drink. You know what I mean? We were like 17, 18 years old, bro. Uh, uh, playing these nightclubs. Um, so I, 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 I packed up my gear in the truck and I drive to Berkeley Keystone, Keystone Berkeley, which is like a mile away from my house. Um, I, uh, I meet the guys. I load up my stuff. I put it on the stage. Meet the guys. Hey, what's up? Uh, this is Gary. This is Kirk. This is uh... actually. Wait a minute. Hold on. No, this is okay. 
actually backtrack a little bit. Kirk had just joined Metallica literally like three or four months ago. Okay. There's a guy playing guitar named Evan McCaskey who played one show with them. And that was the show that I lent him my cabinets. Okay. Okay. So I show up with the cabs. <clears throat> it's Evan, Gary, Tom, Bailoff, and I'm going to say Jeff Andrews on bass for that one show. Um, so the show happens. <clears throat> All right. What's up, you guys? Cool. Love the, love the music. Oh, and so when I, I stayed for the show and I'm listening to their music, dude, and I'm like, what the hell is this music? Because it was so fast, right? And I'm listening. I'm, I'm used to like Judas Priest and Van Halen and Sabbath and you know what I mean? And these guys are playing this metal, but it's so fast. And I'm like, what the hell are they doing? You know, and it was all really, I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. Not that I didn't like it. I did like it, but it was just very, it was damn near punk rock. You know, and it, it's, you know, in, in my ear, it was like yeah. really fast. Metal, right? so, trash metal is a, is a mixture of punk and, and metal, of course. Of, of course. Back then. Yeah, of course. So, um, you know, so I, I pack up my gear. All right, killer show, dude. Thanks a lot so much, you know. Uh, I go home. I didn't think nothing about it, right? About, uh, I'm going to say about a week later, I get a call from Adam again. He goes, dude, check it out. You remember those guys you lent the cabs to? That Exodus dudes? I'm like, yeah. He goes, listen, man. Uh, how would you feel about going out to Gary's house and, uh, and, and, and playing with him and seeing, you know, and just, just going and just jam with him for a while and see what happens. I'm like, why? What's up? He goes, man, uh, that guitarist that you lent the gear to Evan, um, his dad freaked out on him. You know, he didn't want him playing in a band and he, he's, he can't, he can't, uh, He's not able to play in the band anymore. So I'm like, really? Wow, that sucks. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, sure, man, I'll go out there. Um, why not? What, what I got to lose? So the day, the, the next day, I load up all my gear in the truck. And I put out there. And I'm driving down the highway. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Um I'm going to go play with this band that I've never even heard of. And, and their music is so crazy fast. And I'm like, wow, this is going to be nuts. So I go out there and uh, I pull up the truck and the garage door opens. I'll never forget this. The garage door opens and here comes Gary Holt. What's up, dude? What's up? And he, he, he sees uh, his parents are from Oklahoma, you know, and he's got this weird Southern accent. I'm like, weird, dude. You know, I never, you know, it was strange to me. But anyway, uh, he comes up and I, I can't remember if Paul was there the first day or not. Um, I'm going to say he wasn't there the first day I played with Gary. Um, so anyway, so we unload the truck and uh, I had a, I had a little tiny Galen Kruger head, a little Galen Kruger amp, right? It's like 50 watts, you know what I mean? And Gary's got these big old Marshalls, right? I never played through a Marshall before, and I'm like, whoa, dude, that's fucking cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You know? um, that's really cool. So I'm like... Um, the Wolf and the, Marshalls. Yeah, and the, and the amps were so loud, dude. I was like, wow, this is crazy. And their tones were, their tones were so heavy, and I was like, whoa. Killer. This is insane. So... um. So we set up and uh, we start jamming, right? So I don't know. I think we might have played a, a Judas Priest song uh, first, and then and then we and then we then we played "Bonded by Blood." I think it was the first song that it, the first actual song I learned. Um, and it was cool, dude. We it was Tom, me, and I think Robbie McKillop had joined the band a couple weeks before this. And I think Robbie was there and he was just learning the material too. And uh, 
and then and then and then me and then uh and it, so we played we played for like a good three or four hours that day um and then uh i packed up my gear again and then the next next couple of days i did it again we played some more and uh and then I went home and I didn't hear from him for about a week, right? And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, and then I got a call from Adam. And he goes, dude, you want to join this band, Exodus Boom? You want to you wanna be a guitar player for this band? And I'm like, so you know, it took me a minute to for it to I was just like, wow, okay. Um, sure, man, why not, dude? Let's do this. Okay. You know. So I was, I joined Exodus, right? So, and, and, and they were a brand new band. No one had really even heard of Exodus. But, but see, the thing is, is um, so I was from Berkeley and they were from Santa, Santa, San Pablo, right? Yeah. What that did, bro, it was a really trippy thing because I have a lot of friends in Berkeley and Oakland, like from the skate crew and just a, a shitload of friends, dude. Um, so what happened was, is me getting an exodus kind of unit united these this big group of people we have the richmond san pablo el cerrito people on this side uh, yeah the paul was from el cerrito right yeah paul was from el cerrito yeah kensington yeah. el cerrito i was and in then, his, yeah, his graveyard yeah then we have yeah you went to his yes yes so and then we have um the berkeley oak Hold on a second. Get out of here. Anyway, um, yeah. So me, me joining Exodus kind of united all of these people, bro. It was like really crazy. So what's wrong? Are you still moving there? forward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I, I just got a phone call. Yeah. No problem. You can continue. Okay. No problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so moving forward, uh, so we start rehearsing in Gary's garage. Um, Paul shows up one day. What's up, Paul? You know, me and Paul meet and me and Paul and, and Gary, actually, we became like, we were all really, really super close, bro. I mean, it just got to the point where we were just like inseparable. We went everywhere together. We went. We never stopped hanging out. I mean, we we practiced so much, bro. All we did was play. Um, and you can hear it. So, you can hear it. The uh, records are so killer. Yeah, it's just it was amazing. So anyway, um, so I finally meet. I meet Paul. We start rehearsing. Gary gives me a tape. He goes, "Dude, learn these songs." And this whole time, I'm I'm just starting to to get used to playing so fast you know what i mean yeah it was like really it was a lot different um from the style that i'm used to right so it took me a minute but i spent uh so much time learning this music bro um and moving forward so i'm, I'm practicing at home learning the music going to practice practicing with the band every day da, 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 and then all of a sudden uh Here comes my first gig, right? My first gig with Exodus was with Loudness. Oh, from Japan. Ex yeah, it was with Loudness, Exodus, and um, I want to say Animal Chorus. Or, no, it was Control. It was a band called Control um, at, 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 at Wolfgang's in San Francisco. It was Bill Graham's nightclub. Um, sold out. Just unbelievable. And that's this is the show that it was my first show ever with Exodus. Um, and I was scared to death, bro. I was so nervous. Uh, uh, so that I, you know, I and I had never seen, I had never been on stage with Exodus before. So that that night I learned so much, bro. I'll never forget that. Um just the whole backstage and warming up and getting on stage and the intro tape and then just going out balls out. So, and the second gig we had, which was the next week after that was, um, the Eastern front. 
uh, infamous show, Outdoors, in Berkeley, California. Eastern Front with Suicidal Tendencies. Slayer. Oh, well, Su- it was the first show we'd ever played with Slayer. Awesome. Um, and then after that, we had more shows with Slayer. Like, they'd mm-hmm. come up on the weekends, and we'd do Ruthie's all the time. Um, Megadeth came up a couple times. With I remember when Megadeth, Carrie filled in. Because Dave didn't have a guitar player, and then Carrie played a couple shows at Ruthie's, which was really crazy. Um, yeah, but so moving forward, so um, okay, so then we, then we then we played some Metal Monday shows. Of course, the first show with Loudness. Then we then we did Eastern Front. That was my second show. And I'm probably going to have to say my third, third and fourth and all the rest of the shows were probably... You have a g- great memory, my friend. You have I'm a great memory. You yeah, have yeah. a great memory. Yeah, so, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, got it. So then, after the Eastern Front show, we played a Halloween night with Laws Rocket Yeah. at the Keystone Berkeley. And this is before... This is right before we went in the studio to record Bond of My Blood. Probably like a week before. So we're 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 tight as hell right now. We're 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 rehearsing every day, getting that we're do, we're doing nothing but rhythm tracks in the, in the in the rehearsal studio, getting ready to record the album. Um and we got this show at the Keystone Berkeley on Halloween night with Laws Rocket, which was an epic show. Um that was my first show at the Keystone Berkeley. And then and then we go and then we hop in the truck, load up all the gear, and we drive to Petaluma, California, to a studio called Prairie Sun Recording Studio. It's on the back of Bonded by Blood. Um, and then we start tracking Bonded by Blood. First time I'd ever been in the studio. For, I think it was probably the first time that Tom and Gary ever been in the studio too. Every anybody. Awesome. So, hey, you have, okay. I say one thing. So, yes, some, so, something something goes wrong with the uh, with the Zoom because it's my first Zoom meeting in a, in a, in years, and okay. something is counting off. Uh, in a few minutes, it stops, and I don't know how how I can uh, upload it. So uh, maybe we can. Uh, we can continue the next. Uh, you we can finish this, and then the next. And uh, we have the next part for the n- next days or something. Is that an idea? Because something again. I don't know what's going wrong, but the Zoom is counting off in a few minutes. It's it stops, and uh, I have to upgrade it. Something like this, but I don't know how it works. I need to ask okay, how Marco, it works. I think what happened was is I I I'm on my phone. Yeah. And I got a phone call. Yeah, something so went wrong. I had to hear. Not answer, and that might have that might have messed something up. Ah, uh, hey, but but uh, uh, Rick, uh, yes, sir. I, 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 I'm very happy, and I have so many questions for you, and I have so many. You have so many great stories to tell. I hear this. Uh, yes, but sir. I, I want to. Shall we meet a next uh, date for uh, uh, more talking? How and, about tomorrow? Uh, yeah, and I also want to ask you, of course, about uh, how you found this. Uh, how they found this definition of metal, Paul Bailoff, because there's a lot of myth stories about him. I like to uh, talk about with you, of course. But I'd, all, I'd love to talk about Paul, and I also want to talk about the the divers from hell. Uh, and oh the, yeah, Toby uh, Toby Rage well, and his friend. Team. Yeah, I, I, Slay team, a, buddy. Yeah, the Slay team from uh, Toby Rage and Andy. Uh, what was his name? The other uh, Andy Anderson. And the Slay uh, team was my brother. His yes, name was Lonnie Hugo. Yeah. Um, Andy Anderson and yeah. Toby Rage. It was three. Yeah, of them. they are they're killer. They're the divers from hell. And divers from hell. Uh, the divers from hell. Hey, uh, Rick. Uh, that's there's something went wrong with something went wrong tonight with the uh, with something with the computer. So next tomorrow we have to put everything together that we don't. And maybe I put my phone off. Maybe it's I, I can force you, but maybe something that it's okay, not Marco. going. Yeah. Listen to this. Okay. Why don't you text me tomorrow, same time like you did today? Yes. And, we, and we'll get back on it. And we're going to talk about Paul Bailoff 
the me- yes. definition of heavy metal in the world yes. for me, yes, Paul Bailoff and the Divers from Hell. That's part Divers two. From hell. All right, thank you. Love you, bro. Ciao. I love you too, Marco. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. See you later. See you.